Hello, everybody. This is Ming Chen. Hi, I'm Mike Zapsik from AMC's Comic Book Man. And you're watching AFK, the AFK show, our favorite show on the planet. One of. One of. One of. One of. So you're, you're, you're watching the right show. Keep watching and keep watching. And keep watching. And keep watching. Don't stop. <laughs> All right, guys, Olivia Olsen is an American actress and singer-songwriter, best known for her voice roles as Vanessa Doofenshmirtz in Phineas and Ferb and Marceline the Vampire Queen in Adventure Time. Woo, 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 woo! Without further ado, let's welcome her to the stage at Heart of Texas Comic Con! Woo! Woo! I see your polite claps. I need less polite claps. There we go. There we go. Hello. What time is it? Adventure time! <laughs> I've been awkwardly fangirling on her for like the past two days, trying to have cool conversations, and I've just not been succeeding. We had uh, some cool conversations. Yeah, you think so? I'm, there, I'm, I'm, I'm having a moment. i got to push through it. Uh, first of all, we are super happy to have you here. Thank you. I'm happy to be here, too. It's my first time in Texas ever. Ooh, you're going to move here. you got to be careful. <laughs> have you... Texas is awesome. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so I guess we'll start with the with the bigger questions. Like, what's it like being a part of Adventure Time and Phineas and Ferb? And how did you get into this career? <laughs> Do you regret your decisions? Oh, I regret every minute of it. Why am I here? <laughs> <laughs> no, I am the luckiest girl in the world. I think I have the coolest job ever. And uh, I, I never thought that voice acting could be, you know, this full-on career path for myself. But... I got very lucky. I sort of fell into it. Um, you know, I was singing since I was a little girl, and I did uh, the movie Love Actually when I was a kid, when I was eight years old. And, you know, I I always loved acting and singing, but then I was like, I just want to be a kid. So I sort of put it in the back of my mind and stopped really thinking about it. But as I got older and, you know, I, I made these relationships as a kid with a lot of people in the business. and. I was given a really great opportunity um, with the Phineas and Ferb show. Dan, Dan uh, Papa Meyer and Swampy Marsh, who created it, gave me the huge chance to, to become a voice actor. So I, uh, I blame them. <laughs> so I'm going to go with Adventure Time questions because, like I said, this is my jam. Uh, how did you get involved with Adventure Time? What was it like when you got to know Marceline, the Vampire Queen? And then how... <laughs> much do you enjoy the singing parts of what she does which is probably my favorite is to listen to the music that she that she puts out there yeah um i got involved with adventure time in a very bizarre fashion i was doing the work with phineas and ferb and that was the only voice acting i'd ever done and um pendleton ward who created this crazy crazy show called adventure Woo. time was a, a nice old drinking buddy of my dad's and um he my dad is also a writer on Phineas and Ferb, so he goes, do you know the girl who plays Vanessa? Like, I want to bring her in for an audition. Do you have her contact info, all that? Like, how can I get a hold of her? And he's like, contact info? Like, yeah, I pay her cell phone bill. Of course I have it. That's my daughter. <laughs> and he was like, what? So it just, it happened to be this weird, coincidental, freaky thing. And um, yeah, I ended up getting booked for the role. And um, I actually originally auditioned for Princess Bubblegum. But um, I'm clearly more of a Marceline. <laughs> and um, it worked out so funny that when it came time to cast Hunson Abadir, he begged my father to play him. So Martin Olsen plays Hunson Abadir, if anyone didn't know that. But, so that was always really cool to be able to 
you know, battle it out with my real dad and like, but acting dad as well. So as far as the singing, yeah, I'll get to that part too. Um, I'm just really lucky that they write these awesome songs for her and I get to have fun with them. Who writes the music for Marceline? Uh, the writers of the show. Originally, in the first couple of seasons, a woman by the name of Rebecca Sugar, who is awesome. She was one of the head writers of the show. She, you know, took took the reins for Marceline and was writing a lot of her content. And um, unfortunately, she doesn't work on the show anymore because she created Steven Universe. So she, she moved to a different floor in the Cartoon <laughs> Network building, but... I was uh, lucky enough that she actually had me come in and do a, a guest song on Steven this last month. So I'm looking forward to that, <laughs> getting to work with her again. How much interaction do you get to have with the other voice actors? We all record together. So it's almost like this weird live action uh, role play <laughs> that I feel like we're doing. Because with Phineas and Ferb, uh, we recorded all separately. So it was a whole different experience of having all of the actors in the room with you and getting to play off them and you learn a lot like I you know going from just doing it by yourself to then working beside Tom Kenny and John DiMaggio is like it's insane and they're the most talented voice actors out there and it's just it's crazy and you learn so much from people like that so John DiMaggio is someone I definitely want to get here, but we had Billy West, who Billy and John are friends, and they were on a uh, Futurama together. I don't know if you guys came out in September, but Billy was here, and he cut himself on this very stage and bled mildly. <laughs> Behind the scenes story there. Uh, so he actually came on Adventure Time last, this most recent season and did some. Did you get to meet Billy? Um, I did not meet him through the Adventure Time stuff, but I've, I've done many cons with him, and he's a great guy. We just did a Metacon in Minneapolis this last uh, winter, and we did a Detroit con together, and uh, he's a great guy, and he's super talented, too. Like, it's, I feel like I'm, I shouldn't be in the same panels as them. Like, we all did, like, a voice acting workshop together, and I'm like, I, I can't even compare to these guys. <laughs> I just go in there, and I sing my little song, and, and uh, it's, it's very close to my normal speaking voice, except when she goes into a demon voice, but, <laughs> but it's, they're crazy. They're a crazy bunch. <laughs> So would you mind sharing a couple behind the scenes stories with us about you and the other voice actors? You know, maybe like a funny tidbit. Um, I'm trying to think. Like, this is so boring because I can't really think of anything. <laughs> um, it's like, it's work for us. So, you know, there's not, I mean, there's definitely a lot of goofing off around, around the set and stuff. Like, I think the only thing that can come to mind is um, our uh, production guy, Robert. He always records us saying really inappropriate things <laughs> that we don't think the mics are turned on, but then, you know, someone will say something and he just perfectly, like, plugs us in to, like, <laughs> reply. It's something, like, dirty or weird. It's, I don't know, it's funny. <laughs> I like that. Um, <laughs> So I guess now we're going to open up the floor to uh, questions from the crowd for the Q&A. Um, Can I just point out how bored my boyfriend looks on his phone up here? Like, <laughs> could not care less. Front row <laughs> on the phone, bro. Bad play. <laughs> uh, doing it to Marceline, too. Uh, but yeah, there's the microphone over there. If you have any questions, or if I'm already here, you can actually wave me down and I'll just come find you. Yes, please come ask questions. Sorry, I had to yeah. call you out. He's heard all this so many times, so he's like <laughs> not phased at all. Right. Um, are you aware of the popularity of Bubbleine or the Princess Bubblegum and Marceline ship? I am aware of the popularity, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I get asked many questions about it, but um, yeah. I think it's a, a cool little fan thing that came up with. <laughs> oh, that <laughs> ship. All right. Does anybody Everyone ships really weird characters together on Adventure Time. Like I <laughs> ship Peppermint Butler and Marceline, and that is probably <laughs> the oddest ship, because Peppermint Butler is like my favorite character. If you watch the show, he's this cute little 
peppermint <laughs> and he is going to destroy he the He is the world. most evil character in the whole... <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he's, he's pretty evil. But if you have a question, just raise your hand. If not, I'm going to continue to berate her with questions, which I am very good at. This is my skill, talking. Is BMO a boy or a girl? BMO is a video game. <laughs> I don't think they have genders, but she, yeah, Nikki Yang, um, who is a woman, <laughs> voices BMO, and she also voices Lady Rainicorn. So I think she's maybe a girl, but it's a video game, so I don't know if they have. <laughs> well, in the gender swapped episode, it's both the of same. them were the same. <laughs> yeah. and I always thought that was I, really I made funny. that comment too. I was like, I like how in the gender swap episode, it's like there's no change. It's the same actor playing them. <laughs> how do you feel about your gender swapped partner? I love it. I I had I love Childish Gambino, and I did not put two and two together, and I sort of made a fool of myself in front of him, without realizing who he was. Um, I met him at San Diego Comic Con two years ago. And I was sort of fangirled by the situation. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, wait, you're on our panel and you play my character. And I just sounded so lame because I was like, I love your music. Oh, my God. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, I should have played it cool. But so do you, oh, well. <laughs> do you watch the episodes as they come on? Because some voice actors like don't like to. But do you actually watch your shows? I have mixed feelings about it. I love the show. But I would so much rather watch an episode without me in it. Because I do sit there and I'll, uh, I, I, I get nitpicky. And I think any actor uh, can say the same thing. That, you know, you're going to just rip apart your performance and not really appreciate the episode as a whole. So I like all the episodes I'm not in better. <laughs> well, I disagree. I think there should be more Marceline in every episode. <laughs> all right. um, have you ever thought about doing the voiceover of Garnet from Steven Universe? Well, I haven't thought about it because I never got an audition for it and it's already cast, isn't it? <laughs> But that w I did just, like I said, do a little blurb on Steven Universe, so that was really cool. But I don't, I don't really have, you know, roles out there that I would love to do because they're already, they're already filled, you know? <laughs> but I was very excited to be called in to do Steven Universe. It's a really cool show. <laughs> I think we want you in more things. That's what we want. <laughs> what is it like playing a vampire? It's tricky, you know, 80% of the time, it's very close to my speaking voice, and it's, we can, we can have some easy parts of the episodes, but it gets very difficult uh, during fight sequences and morphing into weird beings, and, you know, my director, Kent, will be there and be like, okay, so now she's morphing into this giant squid, and she's making, and, like, the dialogue in the script just says, like, Gernica for Carolina, you know, and you're supposed to like read just these jumbled letters and like make up a noise that is somewhat supposed to be like that. So it's really hard. I, a lot of people, you know, well, I get some people who are like, oh, it must be so difficult to be a voice actor. And then some people are like, all you do is read lines, but it is not. Like, you have to throw your whole body into it. Like, when we're doing our fight scenes, we might as well be punching each other in the face because we're like, <laughs> and like looking like fools when we do it, but it's fun. I like playing a vampire because, you know, she has a lot of different abilities and and weird skills that not all the other characters get to have. So I like that, and I like to hiss. <laughs> <laughs> so Adventure Time uses a much shorter format. It's only fifteen minutes long, and that's with commercials. So it's probably like eleven minutes long. Yeah. <laughs> How long does that put you in the studio recording per episode? We record every Tuesday, and our time slot is like 2 to 6, but we usually get out around like 4.35, depending on the episode. But um, yeah, they record one episode a week, and if you're in it that week, you go to work that week. If you're not, see you next week. But it's, um, it's really cool, and it gives me a lot of opportunities to uh, come and visit different places and do stuff like this. So this is the fun part of the job for sure. <laughs>
Did you expect uh, both the shows you're really well known for, Phineas and Ferb and Adventure Time, to get as popular okay. as they have? Okay, can you put the, sorry, can you put the mic closer to, I can't hear. Bleh. <laughs> did you expect Phineas and Ferb and Adventure Time to get as popular as they did? Wow. Um, with Phineas and Ferb, I, I got it from the get-go. You know, they had a very specific format that they stick to. It's like, the boys are up to something. <laughs> Candace is trying to bust them. Whatever doofenshmirtz is going on somehow counteracts that, and then Candace looks crazy, you know? I thought that was a really clever format for the show, and, and it, was, it was cool. And my dad being a writer on the show, I, I, I had to believe in it, you know, because you have to believe in your parents. Um, not that I wouldn't otherwise, but, um, but with Adventure Time, it was a little crazy, you know? The first season, I think the whole cast was sort of like, what the heck is this? <laughs> because just the dialogue itself Mathematical. was so obscure and the first episode I went into we were like I was like what do you mean I'm riding a giant gold fe goldfish beast like what does that mean <laughs> you know it was just so out there and weird and like I, John DiMaggio said that he was like you know I, I, I almost didn't want to like stick on he's like it was way too weird and I didn't get it and I just but then once it was on TV and we saw the episodes, we were like, oh, this is how it's gonna be. So once we saw it, we were like, okay, this is awesome. And it blew up. Like we used to sort of measure the success of it by each Comic-Con. It was like first year, we saw one kid with a fin hat on and we thought that was awesome. The next year, the whole room was filled with a sea of fin hats and it was like wow this just blew up overnight so I mean we're just extremely lucky because who knew that such a weird freaking show would be this awesome and this huge Adventure Time is kind of uh, credited for I guess revitalizing Cartoon Network which is and it is one of the coolest shows and now you have a lot of shows in the similar vein to that and there's yeah. a lot of really strong male you know, role models there and female role models. You know, Princess Bubblegum is a scientist <laughs> and she saves Finn if she needs to. You know, <laughs> not to mention you're a vampire, but you only drink the color red. Yeah. Was that a question or? No, no, no. I was just a comment. <laughs> okay. Um, I agree though, totally. Um, how is the transition from being Vanessa to being Marceline? Like, what was the different dynamics in the shows? Um, well, it was definitely different going from recording by yourself and having to, you know, you had to use your imagination a lot with Phineas and Ferb, especially in the beginning seasons, and that was my first venture of doing voice acting ever, so it was a huge learning experience having to you know, think, okay, well, this character is like this, and that's the line, and I think they're going to say it some way like this, and I have to react, but you have to react without actually hearing it. So that was crazy, and then you go and you transition to a show where you have John DiMaggio feeding you lines, and you can close your eyes, and you can see Jake the dog saying it, you know? So it, uh, it was an experience, and I think that it's... Um, it's really cool. I think that shows that have the whole cast together, it's a really special thing because I think it helps it helps make it more personal and it makes the, it it develops the characters more. I think when you have someone you can play off of, it's like it's like a real real experience. That's what real acting is like. And so that transition was was hard, but it was awesome. Um who I don't know your, where you're uh, coming from. Uh, oh. <laughs> um, who is your favorite character on Adventure Time and uh, why? Besides yourself. <laughs> uh, hmm. I like Mimo. I have a lot of, there's like, there's so many characters. It's like, how can you pick one? I love LSP. Um, I think oh she's God. just, <laughs> I think she's so ridiculous and she reminds, I grew up in the Valley in California and she reminds me of a lot of those like 
dumb valley girls. <laughs> oh my God, Jessica, like Brad won't call me. And it's just like such an over-exaggerated character. I, I love her. <laughs> Doesn't Pendleton actually voice her? Yes, he does. Oh. I was so excited for the uh, Princess Day episode that came out where like Marceline and LSP teamed up and like did this like Thelma and Louise style thing where they kidnapped a uh, breakfast princess. I was just like, that was the one of the most fun episodes to record. <laughs> Uh, anybody have any? Uh, wow, all the way across. Okay, I'm coming. <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> she got you running around, girl. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to know if, I know in the last episode of Phineas and Ferb that Vanessa and Ferb got together. I was wondering if you wanted them to be together. <laughs> There's a funny backstory to how that came about. Um, Thomas Sangster who is a British actor, plays Ferb. And he also happened to be in the movie Love Actually with me when we were kids. And his character had a huge, huge fat crush on my character. And I had no idea, because he records in England. And so I didn't even know who played him until my bosses were like, you know, that's the little kid who's in Love Actually. I was like, what? So they wrote it into the storyline that he would have a crush on my character because they just thought it was ironic. And um, I think it's great. I loved it just because it was such a personal piece of you know, information that they put into, this, into the show that wouldn't have been there unless you know, it mirrored our real life. Uh, this is kind of a weird question. Uh, what year does Adventure Time take place? It kind of, you know, theoretically. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think it's probably sometime in the, in the near future. But I could be totally wrong. <laughs> like I, I don't know. I, I, I think I'm spot on, but I don't know what Pendleton was thinking when he, when he created it, but. <laughs> I, I I do think about that sometimes because a lot of like the flashback episodes of when like little Marcy was around, it's like there's still like new age technology, but that was like hundreds and hundreds and of years ago. So I, I don't really know. <laughs> What's your favorite conspiracy theory of the show? Ooh, that's a great question. <laughs> that Princess Bubblegum has a dungeon full of cats that she tortures. Because I think that she is like super evil deep down because she has this like super bubbly and sweet presence on the outside, but you see her get real angry and real dark sometimes. So I think she's not as sweet as people think she is. That's just my conspiracy. I don't even think that's a conspiracy. <laughs> She's like the NSA with all those televisions. <laughs> so the lore of Adventure Time, do they, like... The what? Of it? How do they keep track of the lore of Adventure Time? So everything's connected, you know, like they had Marceline, and then the very next season you find out Marceline knew the Ice King. And then you find out that the Ice King was actually Simon. And then they mm -hmm. had the best, most heartbreaking episode ever between... <laughs> Simon and Mar you know, basically where she was begging him not to forget her. And then, so how do they, I guess every five or six episodes, there's a commercial, or there's a show that crushes your heart. You know, <laughs> how do they come up with this stuff? And everything just makes perfect sense in the show, no matter how crazy it is. I know, it's so out there, and then it, it sort of takes it back, and then you're like, oh, it all makes sense now. And that's sort of how I felt, like, in the first season. I'm like, what is going on? And then you start... You have all these questions about the characters, and then I feel like little by little you're like piecing the puzzle together. But that's like what's so great about the show. It's like you'll have this super deep, heartfelt episode, and then next week it's just like strictly fart jokes. <laughs> but I, I feel it like it reflects real life in a sense, which is so beautiful about it. Like, you know, you'll have days where you're just totally random and everything is funny and happy and good, and then it's like stuff gets real and and you have you know they 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 portray these heartfelt episodes in a lighthearted way and i think it really helps people 
deal with stuff that's really going on in their lives. Like I had a girl tell me that the Simon and Marcy episode helped her, you know, deal with the fact that her father was getting Alzheimer's and couldn't remember who she was. And she's like, you know, if Marceline can get over it, I can get over it and realize that he's still going to love me even though he may not remember me all the time. So it has a lot of real life stuff that's going on and I think it's great. Oh, super sweet. He thinks I'm full of it. <laughs> if all the princesses had to fight, who do you think would win? Me. Actually, no, I'm not a princess. I'm a queen. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> well, yeah, she is the only queen in the entire land of Ooh. So let's not get it twisted. But if all the princesses, probably muscle princess. Um, <laughs> she's pretty crazy. Um, Tom Kenny, who plays <laughs> Ice King, calls her HGH princess. <laughs> and hi, Finn. <laughs> she jacked up on something, so <laughs> I think she would probably win. <laughs> the eggplant. Purple princess. <laughs> How far in advance um, do you get the scripts? Like, do you know the entire season ahead of time? And Not at all. I get the script the night before we go record. So you can't tell us if there are more Simon and Marcy episodes coming up? Well, I mean, we have recorded some episodes that haven't come out yet, but because um, it takes months to get the animation all done or whatever. But, yeah, we have no idea. People all the time are like, What's gonna happen next season? I'm like, I want to know too. <laughs> I'm right there with you. Like, I'm a fan of the show myself, even though I work for it. And it's like, when I, the night before I go and record, I'm there reading the storyboard, and I'm like, ooh, I get to fight this person next week, like tomorrow. It's awesome. So, and I can't give spoilers. That's no fun. You guys have to watch the show and be excited about it, just like the rest of everybody else. <laughs> but um. I can say that there is going to be a lot of Marceline backstory coming up. Not necessarily Simon and Marcy, but it's you're going to be very happy. <laughs> Do we find out why she was so sad singing in the clouds in the, the last episode? <laughs> that was weird. I, have, I still have no idea what the context of that was because I wasn't in the episode. But I just came in at the very end on Tuesday and sang that song. And I was like, am I singing about like farts? Because, <laughs> well, no, because she's just talking about how much it stinks. And she's like, you're Dutch boxing the palace and all this stuff. <laughs> so I, I have no idea what that was about, to be honest. <laughs> so if Rainicorn, if she speaks Korean in the USA, if it played in Korea, would she speak English? Huh. That's really interesting. Probably. That that's I didn't ever even thought about that. Nikki is she is Korean, so they sort of just wrote that in to make her um multicultural, I guess. <laughs> but um any place that it's played in another country where they don't speak English, they have totally different voice actors doing it, so maybe they do do it in English, I don't know. Oh, you'll do great. We gotta Google that one. <laughs> uh, what do you mean? Uh, can you oh. sing the French fry song? Ooh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you wanna give me the fin beat? <laughs> She's like, no. Who here can do the fin beat? Anybody? <laughs> I think the boyfriend should be able to do the thin beat personally. <laughs> no, he's <laughs> it's fine. God, thanks for making me do it alone, you guys. All right. <laughs> Daddy, why did you eat my fries? I bought them and they were mine. But you ate them, yeah, you ate my fries. And I cried, but you didn't see me cry. Daddy, do you even love me? Well, I wish you'd show it, cause I didn't know it. Well, call it daddy's his daughter's fries and doesn't even look her in the eyes. Daddy, there were tears there. If you saw them, would you even care? Ba-da-ba-da-ba. -ba -da -ba. <laughs> 
That was awesome. Oh, again? Yeah. I don't like the way my voice sounds on this. Um, if you could pick where Marceline's story goes from here, where would it go? This is unfair because you know where the story goes. <laughs> I, I, I tell them all the stuff like, oh, we did this this week. But so if I could pick. Um, hmm. If I could pick, I would want to see like a, some more flashbacks. So not necessarily where her story goes, but where her story was. Like I want to know why her daddy ate her fries. I want to know why he wasn't around during the apocalypse. I want to know all sorts of stuff. I, I, I want to know who her mom is, maybe how she was turned into a vampire, um, or if she was even turned or born or whatever. But um, there's so many questions I have with the character that I'm slowly getting to piece together myself. Every episode, I'm like, yes, now I know, yes. or and. I'll make guesses about it, but then I'm totally wrong, so I don't know. <laughs> do you read the comic books? I do. I, I get a, you know, I get some at the different conventions if I see them. I read all the Marceline and the Scream Queen ones. Those were my fave. <laughs> I would like to see them do a Scream Queen episode. I think that would be awesome. Her, her uh, old school punk band. <laughs> what would have to be your favorite line in Adventure Time? Uh, from Marceline or from anybody? Um, it's over, you psycho! Yeah. Did that scare you? Sorry. <laughs> Very specific. <laughs> I liked it. So there's an Adventure Time movie that was recently greenlit. Are you able to give us any information on that? I have no idea. Like... I only get the script right before the night, and I don't think we're going to even start production. I don't think they've even started writing it yet. Um, we all were informed because of the BuzzFeed thing, <laughs> and we went in that week and we're like, are we really doing a movie? And they were sort of just like, well, yeah, but we don't have like a story yet. We just sort of know it's gonna happen eventually, but they don't even know when it's coming out or what's, what it's gonna be about. We all had this uh, scary thought, like what if it was just a whole gender swap episode and none of us were in it? <laughs> so I'm hoping that's not what happens, but you never know with that sort of stuff. I'm just hoping Marceline makes her cameo in it. <laughs> Marceline's probably gonna get more than a cameo in a movie. I, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, you're definitely one of the most popular, besides like Finn. And that you might even edge Finn out. It, it should just be a Adventure Time Marceline movie, right? You have a thousand years <laughs> b b of just story that nobody knows about. I think it could be a Marceline movie. Or perhaps a book. Marceline book. So if you could voice somebody else besides Marceline and besides Princess Bubblegum, who would you pick? Hmm. This is like the question that you asked me. Like, I don't really think about it because those are my friends <laughs> that I'll voice it. one to get so. fired. Who's it going to be? And we will Ooh. tweet it out. Definitely Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm just kidding. Um, I don't know. I guess if I knew Korean, I could do... <laughs> I would want to be Lady Rainicorn just so I could... You could be her in Korea. Yeah, exactly. I want to be the happen. Korean version of Lady Ranicorn. Perfect. Then you also have to voice Bimo, right? No, because she would have oh, to speak yeah. in, it would have to speak in Korean. <laughs> it's a nice thought, though. <laughs> All right, do we have any more questions for Miss Olivia Olsen of Adventure Time and Phineas and Ferb? Ah, we do. Is there anywhere else you want to go with your voice acting career? Yeah, my, my childhood dream was to always be a Disney princess. 
And I think I could be the best Disney princess ever. Just not even for like the voice acting aspect, but like just the singing aspect. Like I sing every over the top Disney movie. Like, look at this stuff. Isn't it neat? Wouldn't you think my collection's complete? I think I would, I would kill it, right? Nail it. <laughs> so I want to be a Disney princess. <laughs> Do you have Sorry. Any, <laughs> no, no, don't apologize. Do you have any aspirations of doing live action again? Um, yeah, I would be interested in it. It's it's a hard thing. It's like, it's totally different than voice acting, and I'm not a very good actress, so I would definitely have to get some more acting lessons and um, brush up on my craft and stuff, but I'm interested in it. I think that you know, I didn't really, I stopped caring about it when I was a teenager because I was like, I just want to be a teenager. But now I'm an adult and I have to start thinking about like, what's next, you know? Because no show, as much as I would love it to go forever, no show is ever going to go forever. So you always have to be thinking about, you know, the future. And I would definitely be open to doing that. When was the first time that you were like out in public and someone, or maybe even at a convention, where you were like, wow, Adventure Time is a big deal. Like, what have I signed on for? Like, this is awesome. Uh, San Diego Comic-Con, they had, they shut down Main Street in San, in San Diego and there was a full Adventure Time cosplay parade and we had like 500 kids come out and they were all just chanting, what time is it, Adventure Time? And they had this huge, you know like the Chinese dragons like on New Year's, they had a giant lady rainicorn like that parading down the street and like they, sh they made this whole pizza joint, like they took out all their stuff and they put up like Adventure Time wallpaper and they made like pizzas that looked like the characters and I was like, wow, like this is something here that we're having. Like. It was just mind blowing. I don't think I've ever seen a mass hysteria like that in person until that moment. It was crazy. So if uh, Vanessa Doofenshmirtz were to th pick a fight with Marceline the Vampire Queen, <laughs> who would win and how would they win? I don't think it would be a fair fight. Marceline's got fangs and powers and an ax base and Vanessa just has angst. <laughs> she might out angst Marceline or out emo her, but so if it was a fight on that end, I think Vanessa would win for sure. But I, you can't, a human can't beat a vampire. It's just not possible. And Vanessa is not Van Helsing, though. <laughs> She's more concerned with her uh, backyard scrapyard raves. <laughs> so Buffy the Vampire Slayer versus Marceline the Vampire Queen. <laughs> well, Buffy's like 40 now. I think you've got her. <laughs> well, I don't know. Marceline's like 1,017 or something like that. <laughs> ah. have, you ever, have you ever had a really weird fan experience? A really weird fan experience. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was with my mom in Minnesota at a convention at Medicon. And my mom is a very to herself lady. And she thinks that it's wild that, like, she was just in shock of all these people, like, knowing who I was and. And like wanting my autograph, she was like, this is so weird, but she thought it was cool. But we were heading up to the hotel at the end of the day of the convention and the doors open on a random floor and one of the guys who came over to the booth and was, we were talking for a while, but he goes, oh, it's you, and just tackle hugged me. <laughs> and I didn't even know what was going on. I was just like, oh, my mom's like, don't touch her. <laughs> Please don't touch her without asking. And I was like, it's okay, I'm used to it. She's like, how are you used to that? That is so weird. Assault. I'm used to assault. <laughs> but um, that, was, that was pretty weird. But Oh, and I also got some guy who had like, he was dressed like Finn, but it was a crop top and booty shorts, and he called himself Sexy Finn. Ooh, nice. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know if I'd call you that, but um, style points, I guess. <laughs> Points for creativity. 
Could you sing the chorus of Let It Go? <laughs> Let It Go. No pressure. Yes. <coughs> um, yeah, I guess. I, I guess I do have to get my Disney princess chops up, so. Um, She's also a queen. <laughs> uh, let it go, let it go. I am one with the wind and sky. Let it go, let it go. You'll never see me cry. I don't care what they're going to say. Let the storm rage on. The cold never bothered me anyways. <laughs> Think I could be a Disney princess? Maybe. Absolutely. Let's start an internet campaign. Okay. Um, <laughs> if you could choose any princess to be for a day, who would it be and why? Ooh. I was always... Disney princess, you said? Yes? Uh, I always liked uh, Princess Jasmine. I love Aladdin. I want to go on that carpet ride. Can you take me on that carpet ride, babe? No seat belts. <laughs> I don't think your contract lets you ride in a flying vehicle without a seatbelt. <laughs> Pendleton would cry. Shining, shimmering, splendid. Well, all right. <laughs> uh, so this, I'm attached to the stage. So this Q&A panel is officially over. Let's give Marceline the Vampire Queen and Vanessa Doofenshmirtz a big round of applause. <laughs> Thank you guys very much for coming out. And if you didn't, get a question in or you're too shy, you can always come to my booth and ask me in private. Ah, <laughs> so don't forget to stop by Olivia Olson's table and get an autograph and picture. Thank you for coming out to the Heart of Texas Comic Con, made possible by our sponsors, Bankston's Comic Books and Collectibles, located on Valley Mills. And us, KWTX, which is your local CW network. Please like at the Hot Con on Twitter and follow these guys on Facebook. Let's give her a big round of applause. Thank you, guys. Yay.